Hey yo, what's good? It's your boy Mixtape Moth, and today I'm gonna hit y'all with a review of the new Kanye West album entitled Donda. Let's get to it. All right, so Kanye West is a polarizing figure who has had some pretty bad takes on social and political matters within the past few years, uh, with the exception of his work to free Larry Hoover. That I could definitely get with. But despite his boneheaded comments and overall narcissism, as a music head, I still find myself genuinely curious to hear his new albums, uh, even if I don't necessarily love the sonic direction that he may have taken at a particular time. So going into this new Don to album, I wanted to keep an open mind even if I knew that some of it might not be for my ears. This Donda project lasts an overwhelming hour and 48 minutes. That's double album status, y'all. It's basically as long as Biggie's Life After Death double album and Wu-Tang's uh, Wu-Tang Forever. Am I comparing the quality of those old school classics to this new Kanye album? Absolutely not. I'm just mentioning it in the context of the album's length. Now, it contains 27 tracks, uh, but 23 if you want to be specific, and four remixes or part twos to the original. The reality of it is, an album of this length isn't going to be easy to digest, especially in the current times when people are now returning to work in person for the first time in a long time. We don't have the same amount of time set aside like we did during quarantine uh, to listen to a two hour album. But we got the length we got. Now obviously this album is, is largely a dedication to his late mother Donda West, but it's just as much a gospel rap album. But with that being said, there's a lot of tracks to cover, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit y'all with this track by track breakdown. The opening track is the Donda chant, which actually features Silena Johnson, who appeared on Kanye's All Falls Down single back on College Dropout. This is an entrancing chant of his mother's name, and it pretty much sets the tone that Kanye's mom will be the focal point of the album, but it ends up sounding slightly eerie in the process. The first song is entitled Jail, which features the God MC Jehova. Uh, this is set to an 80s pop rock sounding instrumental. I can't say I actually loved it as I felt the guitar sounded a little flat. This record is the first time that both Jay and Ye have been on the same song together uh, since about 2016. Now, I found Jay-Z's verse to be all right. It wasn't mind-blowing. Some folks are obviously going to have a different opinion. He even hints at the possibility of a Watch the Throne 2, which I would welcome as I like the first one. Yeah, as a whole, this one didn't really do a whole lot for me, but I'm sure some folks will love it. Track three is God Breathed featuring Vori. So the first leg of this song gave off strong Yeezus vibes from the minimalist and bass-heavy beat to the flashing vocal sample. The second half had auto-tune vocals from Vori over this Gregorian chant-like backdrop. Overall, I wasn't too impressed with this one. I feel Kanye definitely let the loop breathe way longer than necessary. Now, track four, Off the Grid, is actually the first song that I like. It has a drill-like beat and a catchy and high-energy hook from Kanye. I can't say I'm too big into Playboy Cardi, but I think his energy was on point. However, it was Fabio Foreign who had the best verse out of the three. I don't think I've ever heard uh, Fabio rap this good on a track before, to be honest. Kanye did deliver a cringe bar or two, like when he said, I talk to God every day, that's my bestie. That's just corny. Right after is Hurricane featuring The Weeknd and Lil Baby. This has a sparse instrumental with epic vocals from The Weeknd who I feel really carries this track. Although Lil Baby and Kanye both had solid verses, there was quite a bit of self-reflection and transparency from Kanye. Like when he said, I was out for self, I was up for sale but couldn't tell, made the best tracks and still went off the rail. Yeah, I felt Ye was really opening up about his flaws, but yeah, The Weeknd's hook definitely made this one a highlight for me. Track six, Praise God, is something like a gospel trap banger. The soundscape is moody, 
and a bit psychedelic, which is fitting for the Travis Scott feature. We also got a verse from Baby Keem that I felt was kind of all over the place as a whole. I did like the instrumental. Uh, I like Kanye's passionate hook, but the song didn't feel as exciting uh, as I feel it should have. I didn't dislike it. It was just cool. Track seven is Jonah, which features Lil Durk and Vori. So I wasn't entirely sold on the shrill auto-tune hook from Vori. I've seen a lot of praise for it, but it wasn't my cup of tea. I actually liked Little Dirk's verse, which was heartfelt and tied into the you know melancholic backdrop. Overall, uh, I didn't consider this one to be a favorite. The following track is OK OK, which features a verse from Lil Yachty, Ruga, and additional vocals from Fabio Foran. So I did like the dark and atmospheric quality to this trap beat. I feel it had the potential to be a banger, but the hook was a little weak in my opinion and Ruga's performance didn't really do much for me. Lil Yachty actually didn't have a bad verse and he's someone who I never really listened to. On Junior, we get more of an upbeat and bass heavy record with organs sprinkled in. So I can't say this had any lyrical value for me, but I could appreciate the melodies and the feel-good instrumental. Now, track 10, Believe What I Say, is a certified highlight. This has a dope sample flip from Lauren Hill's doo-wop song. I feel it's pretty hard to miss with a Lauren Hill sample, but I genuinely dug this track. The subsequent record, 24, is what I would consider gospel stadium music. This features epic, choir vocals from the Sunday Service Choir. It just has that powerful, take him to church kind of flavor. The vibes and messages are positive and the singing is larger than life. Yeah, I feel Ye really flourishes when he gets into full gospel mode. Track 12 is Remote Control featuring Young Thug. It has a wavy beat with mellow synths. The Kanye hook is actually pretty catchy. Like it reminds me of something that Drake would do and people would praise him for it. Although I don't see myself revisiting this, even though I did like the brief whistle that was added. What comes next is Moon featuring Don Tolliver and Kid Cudi. So this one sounded sonically similar to some records on Kid C Ghost and the Ye album. I gotta give Don Tolliver and Kid Cudi their props because sonically their crooning was really on point. I can't knock it, even if this isn't the kind of song that I would normally listen to is good music. Next is the highlight, Heaven and Hell. Now the first thing that immediately stood out to me was the sample that everyone's got to make a living song from the 70s, all my 90s hip hop heads. I know y'all heard this sample used throughout the years. I like Kanye's delivery, which was slightly animated and aggressive. I actually could have envisioned DMX sounding great on this one, especially considering the theme. This is followed up by the Donda interlude, which contains some touching spoken words from Kanye's mom on top of somber keys and harmonizing from Tony Williams and the Sunday service choir. As far as interludes go, this one's solid. Then we get Keep My Spirit Alive featuring Griselda. So I'm happy that Kanye reached out to Griselda and he put them on this album. I feel it's an insanely good look, especially given all the grinding and the leveling up that Griselda has done in the underground. This has an overcast and meditative beat with organs again. It's the epitome of an introspective record as we get some heartfelt verses from Kanye, Conway, and West Side Gun. The theme here is divine intervention and I feel it's something relatable, especially if you've ever done some dirt and got away with it simply by the grace of God. West Side Gun thanks God for saving him when the feds raided and Kanye reflects on getting shot and his mom putting it in God's hands. I gotta say Kanye came correct here too, although I did see Royce the Five Nines name credited on this song, so perhaps he wrote Ye's verse. Either way, it was strong. Especially the last line when Kanye rapped, Rebel, Renegade, Must Stay Paid. So here he's sampling classic lines from the Blastmaster KRS-One. Uh, and this shows that Kanye is still able to be in touch with his hardcore hip hop roots. Overall, it's 
It's a great song. After this is another fantastic record entitled Jesus is Lord. Now, I actually like Jesus is Lord too, even more, uh, which features the locks, but both songs contain the same beat and the same verses from Kanye and Jay Electronica and words from Larry Hoover Jr. On this one, Kanye gives us what I feel is his best verse in recent years. He touches upon everything from police brutality, suicidal thoughts, addiction, his mom's death, and violence in the streets of Chicago. There's also a little bit of storytelling, which is simple yet riveting. Jay Electronica's verse was pretty stellar as well. It was evident that he was in full Jay Electricity mode. Uh, now, I'm not going to unpack it, but it was a very esoteric verse as expected and this is definitely a song that i think is going to make most people's kanye playlist track 18 is new again this has a bright synth and electronic beat i can't say that i was in love with the style of this instrumental but conceptually this song is uplifting and mad spiritual so that i could respect the intent behind it uh, but for some reason, this one felt a little unfinished. Track 19, Tell the Vision, has a random pop smoke verse over this demented piano loop. I feel this one sticks out like a sore thumb, and I can't understand the reason for its inclusion on this project. Track 20 is Lord, I Need You. It's a record where he talks about his past relationship with Kim K, and there's a really cringy relationship bar it's the best collab since Taco Bell and KFC. Only Kanye, man. Yeah, I can't say that this record appealed to me very much at all. I suppose the beat was all right and the singing was okay, but it just didn't resonate. Now, track 21, Pure Souls with Roddy Rich ended up being a high point on the album. This has an upbeat and glossy pop trap instrumental it sounds like the type of production that roddy rich should normally be featured on but roddy rich stole the show with his impressive vocals i mean the man really sung his heart out i'm not gonna hold you i didn't expect to like this song track 22 is come to life now here we get kanye channeling his inner phil collins with the crooning he's doing quite a bit of soul searching and praying for a change to come. This is one of those tracks that is sonically brilliant. Even though I prefer more traditional hip hop at the end of the day, this was a moving song with gorgeous pianos. When the pianos kicked in, it was something special. Also, the guitars from Mike Dean, I believe, added to the beauty of the song. Now, track 23, No Child Left Behind, can be looked at as the last song before the bonus records. This has a heavenly backdrop uh, with an organ and celestial keys. It just has a very epic flavor and I actually didn't mind Vori's part this time. So track 24, Jail Part 2, is the first bonus song and it features The Baby and Marilyn Manson. And I gotta say, it's a crazy time when I feel The Baby had a better verse than Jay-Z, but I'm still not gonna revisit this. Track 25 and 26, OK OK Part 2 and Junior Part 2 did absolutely nothing for me whatsoever these features were pretty weak and it was just additional filler that wasted time the only worthwhile bonus song which strangely ended up being the best track on the album is jesus lord part two and this features three great verses from the locks if i had to choose between this and the original i'm going with part two the only drawback i can think of is that it's an 11 minute and 30 second song. Overall, I give this album a rating of three mics. There are some high highs and really bright spots throughout this album, no question about it, but there are a sizable amount of skip worthy tracks also, thus making this album more of a mixed bag at the end of the day. I feel the obvious takeaway is that if he had shortened this album considerably, then it would have easily been a four mic project. The less is more formula tends to work in most cases. Now, I'm not suggesting that Kanye return back to the seven song phase from a couple years ago, but I don't think he needs to go to 23 and 27 songs either. But if we know Kanye, uh, the man loves his extremes. I personally felt that Kanye was at his best on this album for the more gospel inspired songs. Uh, this time around, he explored these themes with a little more 
passion and depth than he did on Jesus is King. Sure, there were some trap records that I liked here and there, but I feel Kanye shined the brightest on tracks like Jesus Lord, Keep My Spirit Alive 24 and Come to Life. My favorite tracks include Off the Grid, Hurricane, Believe What I Say, 24, Heaven and Hell, Keep My Spirit Alive, Pure Souls, Come to Life, No Child Left Behind, and Jesus Lord too. Let me know what you thought about this album in the comment section below. It's your boy Mixtape Moth. I'm signing out, but be sure to hit that like button and please subscribe. As always, it's peace and blessings. Kanye West, Donda, one.